Oh my gosh. Have I not had water all day? Oh my gosh. What's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyla. I'm your favorite LA realtor because who else is? Okay, that's what I thought. Um, I know I have said in a couple of videos um, that I was going to come back with a little story time on my last client um, because they did get my guy so dirty. Um, and I said it was I'll uh, draw, I'll link the video below, but it was in like my makeup chit chat video. How I had been under contract for a minute. And then um, right before Christmas, we had finally closed. And like that was in, that was also a part of my gift appreciation um, because I went to like Home Goods and like got him, like put together a little gift basket for him or whatever. But now that the contract is over, way over, um, let me give y'all a little story time on how I ended up with this guy, like how he, ugh, it's so sad. Okay. We're just going to get into it. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you guys, I've said this in a couple of videos, but if you follow me, you know that I am a part of Zillow, um, uh, Zillow group like zillow.com or whatever they have basically like a premier agent where like if somebody wants to see a house they like and you pick the little like speak with agent now it rings and I come here I come as soon as I signed up as soon as like we click the like little like button to swipe for my phone my phone starts ringing and I'm literally panicking like okay like this happened fast like i didn't even have to you know wait or anything so this guy calls and he's like um the address pops up and everything and he's like you know i want to see this building uh i want to see this unit um you know whenever we can blah, blah 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 and so basically i was like i'll call the agent like on the listing and let me give you a call right back this was like right before interest rates got crazy this was like end of summer beginning of like end of august beginning of september so he called me so the market was still kind of doing good i called the agent and then she was like oh i'm actually sending out a counter offer right now so a counter offer is when somebody submits an offer and then like basically you respond to it like either you like with whatever changes you want blah 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 so um she's like and i think we're pretty much going to be opening escrow so i was like oh dang so i called him back and um i told him i was like hey i spoke with the agent like they said they're about to pretty much open escrow like they pretty much think the offer is solid so um is there anything else you want to see he paused and then he was like okay this is the situation and i was like oh great you know anytime somebody pause and then they'd be like this is the situation you know it's like oh only me only i would get a call like this so this is the situation i live in that building that i sent that i wanted to the unit that i wanted to see i was like oh okay he's like but the unit i'm in i'm renting it my landlord came last week and they just told me that they were putting my unit up, up on the market next week and i was like oh you're renting that and your landlord just did you dirty like that what so he's like, so I need, I basically need to find somewhere to live um, because, you know, I'll buy it. But, you know, I'm not about to go through the shenanigans with them. Like, why wouldn't they just offer it to me? I was like, okay, um, let me come over. Let me come meet you because I need the inside scoop. I mean, I didn't say this on the phone, but I was like, let's schedule an appointment. Um, Like, if you're not free, like, I don't want to get you worked up. But let me come over on Saturday and then like we'll go over all the details and you can just let me know what you're looking for. Like we'll basically like do a buyer's consultation even though you really don't need a buyer's consultation. Like I'm so down to help you like let's go get him tiger. So y'all I get over there on Saturday and this man is like pouring his heart out to me. 
So the owner, he's been renting the unit for some time. The owner ends up unaliving himself. So the, the house goes into the estate and the estate goes to the family. So now one of the family members is like, I'm done with it. Like, I don't even live in you, the United States. Like, bye. Like, I'm ready to get rid of it. Like, you've been living there long enough. Like, I'm just ready to get rid of it. Comes to find out this man tried to buy the property before the man unalived himself. But the man unalived himself during escrow. So in the middle of the transaction, the man unalived himself. So everything just shut down. Like they did not, because then it had to go into the estate. It had to be turned over to a family member, just like all this crazy chaos. And I was like, what is happening? This is like a lifetime story. Like girl, Kyla, only you would end up in a situation with a client like this. Like every client that I have had has been some type of like, not drama, but it's been some type of like in-depth story. So I live for it because, you know, I was just like, I'm literally like Robin Hood, not even Robin Hood. I'm just like, let me come pick you up and take you away from this madness. The family ended, member ended up playing him and was like, we're going to sell the building because in the market that we're in, I know we can get more money than what you were going to buy it for. So I told him, don't even worry about it. Don't trip, don't stress, don't do nothing. I said, I'm going to submit an offer and then they're not even going to know it's you because this is a probate sale because it has to go through the estate. So it has to go through the court and everything. So mind you, this is my first probate, but in my head, I'm like, we got this. This is just me being confident. I've done regular sales. I've never done a probate. Never knew about the court confirmation thing or anything. Like this is stuff you heard about like on your real estate exam, but you never thought you would actually use it or it would come to fruition. Yeah. Um. So I'm going to submit the offer. They're not even going to know it's you, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to reach out to the agent. So I run home, write up the offer. And what they were asking for was definitely like current market price. I think when he was trying to originally purchase it, it was maybe like two years ago or something like that. But he like COVID happened. So like he's kind of just been sitting in limbo. And then they came back and tried to play my man. So I was like, I'm here for you. Let's do it. So we submit the offer. We submitted the offer with a good amount, not offering too much or too less. Like we came in good. But now, mind you, he is a tenant. Who wants to buy, for one, a probate property with a tenant in it and you don't know if the tenant is going to get out? Like, when you look this up on, like, the realtor side, if I'm your agent, like, this is, like, one of those red flag city properties. Like, absolutely not. We're not even going to go look at it. It just has too many red flags. So, like, whatever. Why do we submit the offer? And the agent was trying to play like, oh, you know, um, you need guys need to come in strong because, you know, we may have other options on the table and you need to outbid other people. Child, why did they not end up having no offers on the table? Because like I just said, this is a red flag city property. No other, no sane person is going to take that. Like nobody, no sane person. So I called him, I was like, Y'all don't have no offers. I'm the offer. My client is the tenant that's in there right now. So let's play ball. Like, do you want to do this the hard way or the easy way? So they tried to do it the hard way. They was trying to come and, you know, play. He, like, the family member that was now in charge of the estate, like, didn't know any... He didn't live in the United States. He didn't know any California law. So it was, like, basically, like... He was trying to be very cutthroat, very rude throughout the whole transaction. Like, I was just like, I kept telling my client, like, now, because now at this point, me and him locked in. Like, we got the off offer accepted, but they were, like, trying to, like, tussle on some of the terms. And I'm just like, like, y'all left my guy in limbo for two years. Like, 
don't try to like pick and choose now because we're your only buyer. Nobody else is going to come see this property. So y'all need to play ball. So eventually after a couple of days went by or whatever, they ended up playing ball. But then me and my client, we were like on pins and needles the whole time because if you guys saw that chit chat video, I was like, we were on a wing and a prayer the whole time because interest rates kept going up and they were going up so fast, so hard. We were like, oh my gosh, like, is he even still going to qualify for the property? That's how fast they were going up and aggressively. He had money. He had a lot of money actually. But if rates kept going up so high, like he would have lost some of his buying power. We were like, oh my gosh, like all they need is like, a, like it was one of those transactions where if we would have came up short on anything, they would have been like, oh, we're keeping his money. Like you guys can kick rocks. Like we'll, you know, put it back on the market. I knew that, but I also knew that was our leverage because who wants to put it back on the market where our interest rates are going skyrocket crazy? Like, you're really not going to get any buyers now because we're here. Like, do you want to start the process all over again? Go back on the market, do this, do that. Like, I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to do that. So, like, you better just be nice to us. And I told my client, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to act like, I'm not going to act out because, you know, they have the upper hand. We're just going to play nice. Uh, you know, we're going to meet them with kindness. We ended up coming out on the end of the table. We got everything we wanted. We closed the transaction, but this was literally the landlord from hell. This is why you cannot be out here renting because things happen and people switch up on you. And I'm just like, this man literally, and not only did they do my guy dirty, like as the landlord, he was about to buy it a long time ago. Y'all should have just gave it to him the first time. He still ended up winning and being the buyer anyway. So why'd y'all try to play my dude? I just be wanting y'all to realize how grimy this real estate stuff is. Like, I had to come tell y'all that story because it was like, we held out for, I held it down with my guy for three months. And like, I just went through every emotion with him, went through the process with him because they really tried to play him. I like, I wanted to spill it the whole time. Like I was going through it, but I couldn't. You can't talk about it. Uh, you can't talk about a transaction while you're under contract. So, <laughs> um, but yes, it was just absolutely insane. So I just had to come share that because I know everybody was like, why are you holding it out? Like, just say it. I'm sure it's not that serious. It wasn't that serious, but it was. I will have more crazy stories as I go through more transactions. I have a few. I actually have some like tucked away. So, you know, that was just like the most recent and it like the most the most drama had happened at the beginning. The rest of the transaction was smooth sailing. So my guy got his house. He came back and did it on him. Um, so make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe to the channel so I can give y'all more of this real estate drama, this real estate tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, I love y'all. I'll see y'all later. Bye.